So in this set of videos, we're going to be looking at inclined surfaces or inclined planes. Okay? So what that means is that if I draw a horizontal plane and then I lift it up by a certain angle theta, I can now place my particle, my box, onto that surface, onto that plane. Okay? So the plane is now lifted up. Okay. Now we've dealt. We I kind of introduced uh, this right back at the start when we were looking at forces, um, but I want to do this kind of from scratch here so that you're clear on what's going on. So what we've got is a situation where we've got this block on this inclined plane, and the weight of that particle will be working vertically downwards. Okay. So my weight mass times gravity is working straight down, okay? I know my uh, mind's a bit bendy there. It's all right. Okay. The normal reaction force, so the normal reaction force that's perpendicular to the plane works in this direction here, okay? There's R. So this is the situation that we have. Now, if you just think about um, if this was a smooth inclined plane, and that's what we're going to deal with for the first, two, uh, first few problems, then if you just place a block on a perfectly smooth plane that's inclined at a certain angle, theta, then what's going to happen? Well, the block's going to slide down the slope. Okay? So when you've got those types of problems, you can start to think about, well, what type of questions could I get asked? Well, if you're thinking about, well, if I just release that block from rest, what happens to the block? You could be looking at, well, how far does it go down the slope in a certain amount of time? How fast is it after a certain amount of time? So that means we're gonna, we could potentially bring in SUVAT. You could also look about something pulling the block up, uh, up the slope. Okay, so that could bring in tension as well. Okay, so all the problems that we've dealt with so far can be then applied to this context. Now, to really think about what's going on, if we think back to how we would have dealt with this when we were just looking at forces working on a particle, then if I draw it like this, where that's my normal reaction force, and here is my weight, then ordinarily, how I would have gone about dealing with this is I would have thought, right, well, if I draw in a horizontal line and then complete this triangle, then I can divide the, the uh, normal reaction force into its component parts, into its horizontal and vertical components, okay? Which is fair enough. Now, the problem with that in this context is that because we are often looking at motion that goes up and down the slope, Okay, that means that we're not really wanting to think about motion in horizontal and vertical components. Okay, I don't want to have to deal with SUVAT and I'm looking at a 2D SUVAT rather than a one dimensional SUVAT. It would be a lot easier if I just look at how the block is, is uh, moving up and down the slope, parallel to the slope. So rather than drawing my triangle this way, what I'm instead going to do is look at these problems by resolving um, parallel and perpendicular to the slope. Now what that does is it divides that weight force into its component parts. Okay, So I instead draw a right angle triangle down here so that I can divide the weight into this opposite length, this parallel to the plane, and this adjacent side, which is going to be perpendicular to the plane. OK, so how does that work here? Because if I divide this into its piece, into its parts, and I draw in this triangle like that, OK, that's always going to be our first step here then how does this situation relate to the angle? Well, what I can do is I can just fill in the blanks here because 
If that's working straight downwards, then I know that that's a right angle. Okay, is that's going to be perpendicular to my horizontal surface. This angle must therefore be 90 take away theta, okay, in order for these three to add up to 180. So that's 90 minus theta. And I know that that will be uh, perpendicular to this line. So I know that that's a right angle there. So that must mean that these two add up to 90, and so that angle is theta. So therefore, I can then think about this triangle using its opposite and adjacent sides. So this side, the opposite side, using trigonometry, Sokotoa, will be W sine theta, or Mg sine theta. And this side will be W cosine theta for the adjacent, or Mg cosine theta. So once you've split your weight up into its two component parts, one parallel to the plane, one perpendicular to the plane, that makes your life a lot easier. Because all the other forces that you deal with, the normal reaction force, tension, and when we introduce it, friction, will be working perpendicular and parallel to the plane. And so then we've got the weight components, and so then we can deal with SUVAT, if necessary, um, moving up and down the inclined plane. OK, so this is going to be our first job. When we see the weight working vertically downwards, we can divide it into its two principal parts, and then we can start resolving parallel and perpendicular to the plane.